the girl from Freedom UK and all the organizers for putting together this protest. They've done such an amazing job and I know they've put in so much time and effort um, to putting it together. So can we just give them a quick round of applause? Yeah. And secondly, I just want to say thank you all for coming today. Um, it's so promising to see so many people here. Um, we're the ones who can put an end to this industry and it means so much to see every single one of you supporting this issue. So for those who don't know me, uh, my name's Molly, I'm a volunteer for Rico Barry's Dolphin Project and last season I spent two months in Taiji, Japan documenting the dolphin captures and slaughters that go on there. I'll come back to that a, bit, a little bit later, but first of all, I just want to fill you in a bit about my journey and how I got to being a well and dolphin advocate today. So as a kid, I was obsessed with dolphins. Um, my family used to take me and my brother to Florida every summer and we'd visit all the theme parks and unfortunately that would involve going to SeaWorld. And at the time I had no idea that these animals were living such a horrible life. Um, I was completely deceived by the false advertising and their marketing and their seemingly educational message. I felt I'd fallen for it, as many people do. And obviously now I feel horrible about it. But for my 10th birthday, we actually went swimming with dolphins at Discovery Co, which is um, a park owned by SeaWorld. And at the time, I thought it was a completely magical experience. I left there actually wanting to become a dolphin trainer. And as I got older and I realized that science wasn't really my strong point, I couldn't do a degree in marine biology, I wasn't smart enough for that, I settled for an English degree instead. But I still managed to engineer it, so I wrote my dissertation about whales and dolphins. However, this time it was from a completely different perspective. A few years before, I'd seen the documentaries Blackfish and The Cove. I'm sure you've all seen them. And if you haven't, then please make sure you do and encourage every single person you know to watch these documentaries. They are absolutely life-changing. And for me, who had fallen for the false advertising of SeaWorld and other marine parks, watching these documentaries was just heartbreaking for me. After that, I researched and I researched and I didn't want to believe it was true, but everything was pointing in the right directions that dolphins do not belong in captivity. And so when I was researching for my dissertation, I came across an event um, just on the San Juan Islands off of Washington State in the US uh, called Superpod, where whale and dolphin advocates will get together, marine biologists, filmmakers, um, everyone who loves whales and dolphins is open to the public. They get together for a week-long conference. And so I decided to buy a ticket, and I went. And I couldn't believe the strong sense of community of all the people I met. They were incredible. I was so inspired by every single person that was there that I came home, and I was ready to get more involved. So I came back, and a month later, I booked my ticket to Taiji for the first time as a code monitor. My first time there, I spent just two weeks. Um, and on the very first day, luckily it was raining, and so the hunters didn't even leave the harbor. They, there was no captures or slaughters that day, but a transfer truck drove by. And so we drove after it, and we pulled up behind it, and we documented as they transferred three bottlenose dolphins from the sea pens in the harbor. They strapped them into slings, they pulled them up into the air on cranes, really high, and then lowered them into these wooden crates that were no longer than the length of each dolphin. And at that moment, as I was taking pictures and I was filming what was happening, all I could think about was the dolphin that I had swam with when I was 10 years old and how that dolphin probably went through the exact same experience. Later, since then, I've looked up on Satabase. It's a database for all the cetaceans that are worldwide um, in captivity. And I found out that the dolphin that I swam with on my 10th birthday, his name was Kai, he was captured off the coast of Mexico. So to know that that dolphin that I'd seen so happy and so energetic and playful, to know that he had gone through this exact same trauma was just heartbreaking. Last season, when I went to Taiji, 
there was one day where a pod of reef sized dolphins were driven into the cove um, and netted in. Trainers arrived with slings, and this was unusual because reef sized dolphins are more likely to be slaughtered than they are to be captured. So these trainers inspected the dolphins, they manhandled them, and they chose six of them for a life in captivity. They put them into slings, they strapped them to the sides of the boats, and then they transported them to the sea pens just around the corner. The rest of the pod were slaughtered for their meat. And what really hit home for me at that point was the fact that the trainers decided which dolphins were to live and which dolphins were to die. Well, I say live, they don't live in captivity anyway. That, that is not a life for them. But these trainers who claim to love them, they claim to care for them so much, and then they choose which ones can live and which ones can die. It's just awful. And it's at that moment when you realize it's all about the profit that they're making. It's nothing to do with their, their regard for their welfare at all. Live dolphins can sell for up to six figures each. And so all these people are thinking about is their paychecks at the end of the month. So what can we do? And this is why it's so important that all of us are here today to support this cause and to draw attention to this issue. However, from my experience, and obviously from being someone who was completely unaware and who, whose mind was changed, my life was changed, and I've done everything I possibly can to try and rectify that since, um, it's been difficult for me talking to people about it because sometimes I do get quite passionate, I do get quite angry, and sometimes that's not always the best approach to take. Um, heated discussions turn into arguments and people get defensive and they don't listen. So what I've learned is to approach people in a much more calm, composed way, deliver the facts as they are, they, they stand on their own, we can't argue with the truth. And we just need to be understanding of these people. If someone had turned to me just after I got back from that holiday when I was 10 years old, after swimming with dolphins, and pointed at my face and told me I was wrong for swimming with dolphins, I would have got very offended probably and quite defensive and tried to justify my actions. Um, and so I think that's why some people, when they're told they're wrong for swimming with dolphins, that they, they get all defensive and, um, and it turns into an argument. So that's why if I had any advice for you to take away with you today, it would be to just remember, remember that. Remember to be calm, be composed, be informative, be understanding, and most importantly, be compassionate. We're all here because we love whales and dolphins. We want to do what's right by them. So we need to keep up the fight. And we're already making such a difference. This week, Mexico have banned dolphinariums, and last week, Barcelona did the same. And just a few months ago, South Korea banned the import of dolphins from Taiji. We are making the right steps in the right direction. We just need to continue the fight. So please, please shout loud and proud today, because I'm confident that one day we will empty the tanks. Thank you.